the story of Great Wolf Lodge. As we gather around the fire with our friends and family, I look around and wonder how Great Wolf Lodge came to be. In truth, it's a good story, quite an interesting tale, and the story begins with two of our friends, the Beaver Brothers, Tooth and Nail. Tooth and Nail are different, as brothers can sometimes be, but both enjoy building things with the logs they get from trees. Nail is creative and likes to daydream about new ways to have fun. Tooth likes to do everything exactly right. He's the responsible one. One day, while they were working and fixing things around the woods, they heard a squeak, a crack, and whoosh. Those sounds didn't sound so good. They looked and saw that logs were falling from a pile they had stacked nearby. When would it stop? They could not tell. That pile had been very high. When the logs stopped falling all around, Nail looked at it with pride. Do you know what this is? Do you see what I see? We've made a great water slide. Tooth let out a sigh, shook his head, and took a long look at the mess. I don't know. There's a lot to do, but it could be a slide, I guess. It will take some adjustments, Tooth said to his brother, to make this slide just right. And Nail said, just think of how all of our friends will want to ride it all day and night. So Tooth set to work inspecting the logs that would make this amazing new slide. And Nail took off to tell all his friends that he and Tooth had made a new ride. The first one that Nail met was Oliver Raccoon, and he told him the big news. Oliver thought for a second and said, I think I have something that you can use. I'll run and get my computer. It has a program that can calculate and measure. It may help to figure out how to make the slide even better. Your computer would help. That's a great idea, Oliver, Nail said with a smile. That will certainly help Tooth make an even better slide with the wood from our log pile. When Nail ran into Wiley the Wolf, he told him all about the slide. Wiley suggested that inner tubes might make for a smoother ride. What a great idea, said Nail. I'll tell Tooth right away. Maybe we can get this slide up and running before the end of the day. So Wiley took off to share his idea to make the water slide better. And Nail smiled as he thought to himself, this will be the best water slide ever. Sammy the squirrel overheard what was happening and had an idea of her own. What if we give everyone a souvenir, she suggested, something that they could take home. That idea is good too, Nail told Sammy. But what kind of souvenir? Well, maybe, Sammy said as she held out her camera, a photo of the fun that they've had here. It was coming together so much better than planned thanks to all of their friends' great help. And Nail thought he should get back to the slide so Tooth wouldn't have to do all the work by himself. When Nail returned, he saw Tooth wasn't alone and all their friends had been working on the slide. He saw Brindley Bear at the very top getting ready to take the first ride. Brindley laughed with delight as he slid down the slide and he heard the cheers of his friends. And when it was over, he ran up to Tooth and said, I wish this day would never end. Then Wiley looked around at the rest of the wood that Tooth and Nail had piled and got an idea that he just knew would make all of his friends smile. Hey, Tooth and Nail, Wiley said, can you help me think of a way to build a great big lodge where all our friends could stay and play? That's a great idea, Nail said to Wiley, and the brothers started the job. And today, what they built is where you now sit. They call it Great Wolf Lodge. We're glad you spent the day with us and can spend the night with us too. 
Now head off to sleep, because when you wake up, there'll be more fun stuff to do. Brindley's Big Day. The sun is coming up over Great Wolf Lodge, shining on all the beautiful land that surrounds it. Who is that making his way to the lodge? Why, it's Brindley Bear. Today, he said, I have so much to do. First, I think I'll go down the biggest water slide. Then, I think I'll defeat a dragon. I'm sure that I will have some ice cream and spend some time at the cup club. I always have fun there and... Brindley knew that he had a lot to do that day, so he hurried to get his day started. First, Brindley jumped from lily pad to lily pad at the Bigfoot Pass. He even hopped off a few times and splashed around in the cool water. Then he went to Fort McKenzie and spent what felt like hours climbing through suspension bridges, swinging on the cargo nets, and sliding down the treetop sides. When Brindley made it out of Fort Mackenzie, he needed a break from all that climbing. Time to kick up my feet and relax, said Brindley, and he took off toward the lazy river. Brindley watched the water roll slowly by as he grabbed his inner tube. Lazily, he put the inner tube in the water, laid back inside of it, and let the soft current carry him away. Brindley floated past some water slides, with kids squealing with delight as they splashed into a pool of water at the end. I'll go on that one next, he thought to himself. Or maybe that one, or... As he was thinking of all that he had left to do, he felt his inner tube nudge the one in front, breaking his concentration. Hi, Brindley. Brindley looked up to find Rachel Raccoon was sitting in the inner tube in front of his. Oh, hi, Rachel, he said. Sorry about the bump. That's okay, Rachel said. Have you had a fun day at the lodge? Had, Brindley asked confused. Hadn't his day just started? He looked around and noticed the sun was going down. The day was almost over. There were still so many things at the water park that Brindley wanted to do. I had a great day, Rachel, Brindley said, but I'm having so much fun that I don't want it to end. There's just so much to do. I see it's getting darker, which means it's going to be bedtime soon. I don't think I'll be able to sleep tonight with all this excitement. Rachel saw that the afternoon was turning into night. She too was having a great day and didn't want it to end yet. You know, Brindley, Rachel said, I bet our friends are thinking the same thing. We don't want our fun day at Great Wolf Lodge to end, but it does look like it will be bedtime soon. I have an idea. Rachel said with excitement. What if we got all of our friends together and had a sleepover? That's a great idea, said Brindley, but I still don't think I'll be able to sleep thinking of all the fun I had today and all there is to do tomorrow. Rachel thought for a minute. I've got it. We can work together and try to think of ways to help each other fall asleep. Oh boy, said Brindley, this will be great. Let's go tell everyone to grab their sleeping bags and pajamas and meet us at the Great Clock Tower. Okay, said Rachel, and the two set out to find their friends and get their sleepover started. As the sky began to change from orangey red to a purpley blue, Brindley, Rachel, Wiley, Violet, Oliver, and Tooth and Nail all put on their pajamas, grabbed their blankets and stuffed animals, and headed to the Great Clock Tower to watch the show that signaled that it was bedtime at Great Wolf Lodge. 
When the show was over, all the friends set up their sleeping bags and began to settle in for the night. They watched as the fire rose from tiny sparks in the fireplace to a ball of warm orange that spread over the logs. I don't know about you guys, Brindley said, but I'm so excited, I don't know how I'll get to sleep tonight. I did so much today, but there is still so much to do. I know how you feel, said Oliver. I spent so much time under the giant tipping bucket that I barely had any time on the water slides. Violet agreed. I was having such a lovely time soaking my paws in an ice cream bath that before I knew it, most of the day was gone and I only rode two water slides. So tomorrow is going to be a big day of water slide fun for me. I can't wait. Wiley spoke up next. Well, we've got our comfy beds. We're in our pajamas. We have all the things that we need, but we're just not ready to sleep. So what else can we do? Something I like, Violet chimed in, is taking some big stretches. That would help get anyone ready for bedtime. I think that's a great idea, said Wiley. Why don't you show us how? So they all stood up and rhymed along with Violet. I'm in my pajamas and I'm all worn out. Fun with my friends is what I'm all about. I'll reach up high, I'll stretch down low, and after sleeping tonight, I'm gonna go, go, go. All of the excitement was wearing Brindley out. He felt a yawn creep up and he sighed a heavy sigh. Brindley's eyelids fluttered for a moment and he thought they suddenly felt very heavy. Well, Wiley said, these are all great ways to help us get to sleep, but there is just one more thing I like to try. And what's that? Brindley said through a small yawn. A bedtime story, Wiley said. I know just the story for tonight, if you would like me to tell it to you. All the friends agreed that a bedtime story would be great, and Wiley began to tell a story about all of the great things to do in the forest. As Brindley listened to Wiley tell the story, he took a long, deep yawn and let his heavy eyelids close. As Wiley continued the story, he watched as Brindley and his friends fell fast asleep, dreaming of the next day's adventures at Great Wolf Lodge. And as he turned the very last page, he ended his story with a howl, as all wolves do. We are glad you joined us tonight. We hope you too have a good night's sleep, so we can see you here again tomorrow. Thank you.